transformations. So the main reason we did uh, describe a lot of the parent graphs is so that you're familiar with those functions and the graph that goes along with it. Um, because now we're going to transform those parent graphs and we're going to shift them vertically, horizontally, we're going to reflect them, we're going to also um, stretch them uh, and shrink them. We're going to do all types of things to them, and that's transformations. There's a whole list on this front page of uh, formal definitions uh, for your transformations, but I'm going to highlight a few of the specifics. And then as we go over many examples, hopefully these will start to uh, make sense to you. So first of all, just for the introduction of them, to graph a function plus k means it went up k units for a vertical shift. Okay, if you have minus k, then we go down k units. That's important for the vertical shifts. In the horizontal shifts, if you would highlight, it says f is a function. If you have the graph x plus h, you go left h units. Now, I want you to notice that this is a plus h. But it's kind of opposite what we would think. We would think plus would mean go to the right, but we see that it's opposite. And then for the horizontal shift here, minus h means go to the right h units. Now, recall, for the horizontal shift, I'll put a little star by it, it's kind of the one we think opposite because for the minus h, we go to the right, and for the plus h, we go to the left. So recall that later when we start talking about these again. Okay, so we look at reflections. So if I have a graph where I have y equals the negative f of x, and I want you to pay attention to that negative, it means it's going to reflect across the x-axis. If my original function has the negative sign with the x, it's going to reflect across the y-axis. Okay, we'll talk about this more, like I said, as we do examples. Vertical scalings, um, basically it says if you have A is greater than zero, A is this number out here, and you multiply, we have a number in front of that. We have this case, if A is greater than one, you're going to get a vertical, whoops, jump up here, a vertical stretching. If A is in between zero and one, you're going to get a vertical shrinking. So one more time, greater than one, a stretching in between 0 and 1, a shrinking. And then we look at the horizontal scalings. Um, this is when you pull across left or right, across the uh, horizontal. If your B is in between 0 and 1, you're going to have a horizontal stretching by a factor of 1 over B. And if B is greater than one, you're going to have a horizontal shrinking and a factor of B. Okay, so this one, the vertical, remember vertical is the up and down, horizontal is this, so we can see all of our um, different descriptions and characteristics of these. And so greater than one, you have a vertical stretching with a factor of A. In between one, zero and one, a shrinking with a factor of one over A. And then for horizontally, um, in between 0 and 1, you have a horizontal stretching of 1 over B, and greater than 1, horizontal shrinking of B. Basically, it's taking our parent graphs, and we usually like stretching them taller or making them wider or fatter, uh, and so on and so forth. So now we're going to look at some examples. So we have lots and lots of graphs, and we're just going to drill and kill through this till you understand the concept. The first thing we're going to do is this first section of um, problems 1, A, B, C, and D. We're going to uh, determine what our parent graph is, and we can see they all look like that uh, V, which is the parent graph is Y equals absolute value of X. Okay. The next thing I want to do specifically, and it may be hard for you to see the vertex, is to distinguish the vertex, and this one is 0, negative 3. Okay, if it helps you on your paper, you may want to go through oops, and um, redraw the x-axis and the y-axis right here so it's easier to count. That's the x-axis and 
this is a y-axis. Anyway, so we go to 0, negative 3. So we're going to put those values. y equals absolute value x, and then it's going to be minus 0, because this is our x value, and then minus 3. Now this simplifies to y equals the absolute value of x minus 3. And this is the equation of our line, and all that means to do is go down 3 units. So it took our parent graph and we shifted it down 3 units. Alright, let's look at the next one. The vertex in this one is the order pair 2, negative 3. So when I plug it in, I'm going to have y equals the absolute value. Now it's going to be x, and it's minus 2. Because you remember in our horizontal, when I told you it was opposite, you think opposite shifting, since that's um, a 2, it's going to be a minus 2 here. And then minus 3. So this is our equation. And that just simply means go to the right 2, and then down 3. So it's taking the parent graph, moving it to the right 2, and down 3. Alright, and we move on to C, which is negative 3, 0. Okay, one of the things I want you to notice is that it is reflected. You can see it's kind of upside down. It's reflected about the x-axis. So when I name this, I have y equals absolute value because it's reflected I put a negative out front okay that tells you that it's upside down and then I'm gonna do X and then I do the opposite for my horizontal shift so since that's a negative 3 I put plus 3 here and then plus 0 which we don't need that on the outside so I get this is my simplified equation and that means to reflect, and then we also went to the left three, if we read them back. And D, the last one for this set, it's the vertex is at 1, 4. We can see it's a reflection, so I have Y equals negative for the reflection because it's flipped. I'm going to have X. Because this is positive 1, I do minus 1 here, and then I do plus 4. So this is my equation. It's reflected. It's the parent graph reflected. Move to the right 1 unit and up 4 units. Alright, number 2. If we look at the function in number 2, we can identify the parent graph to be y equals x squared. Now, we're going to determine the equation of each one of these. That's been um, the transformations of the, of the y equals x squared functions. And first, identify the vertex, 0, 2. So I have y equals, this time it's x squared is my function. Okay, but it's like x minus 0 squared plus 2 and that's going to simplify to y equals x squared plus 2. This is my equation and we just go up 2. We take the parent graph and move it up 2 units. For b, we know, um, the vertex is negative 3, negative 2. We are going to y equals, so it's going to be x, since this is a negative 3, we're going to put it back in our equation as the opposite, and then minus, oh, don't forget your squared, and then minus 2. So this is our equation, and we went to the left 3, down 2. Left 3, down 2. Alright, see, we noticed this thing is upside down, so it was reflected about the x-axis. We also see it's, um, the vertex is at 2, 0, so you get y equals, here's our reflection, that's for being upside down, and then we have x, since that's positive 2, we do the opposite of it, squared, and then plus 0, so you simplify this to negative x minus 2, squared, it is reflected, 
that's our equation. It is reflected. And it's also going to be to the right, too. Two units. And then we finish up with our last one on this one before we move to the next set. The vertex is 0, negative 1. It's reflected, so y equals negative x minus 0 squared, and then we have minus 1, so we simplify this as negative x squared minus 1, and that just means this is our simplified equation. Reflect, we have a reflection, and we are going down 1.